Well, after who knows how long, we've been asking for a loop builder to be natively integrated into Elementor. And finally, we kind of have it. So first of all, before I go any further, let me just give a quick shout out to Phil Davis for letting me know that Jeffrey over at Lightbox have released a video covering this. I'll link that in the description so you can check out Jeffrey's video and also subscribe to his channel. It's a great channel. I'm going to show you some of what he's shown you, but I'm also going to show you some other things that kind of limit what we can do. So stick with me and I'm going to show you some of those limitations currently. Hopefully they will be rectified when this eventually gets released. Now, the second thing I want to say is for some reason, this is only available in the cloud platform. So if you are just using self-hosted Elementor, even if you're using currently the developer's edition, this feature does not seem to be available inside there. So bear that in mind if you go looking for it. Okay, so let me just demonstrate what I'm talking about. First of all, I've logged into my cloud platform. I'm going to come into Elementor and into settings. And inside there, we're going to go over into experiments. And in there, you should see if you are using cloud or future, when this becomes available inside the developer or the beta edition, hopefully you'll see it there. We've got the loop builder. So currently this is active and you need to also make sure that you have the Flexbox container active. If you don't have that active, you won't see or be able to use the loop builder. They are kind of tied to each other. So you can't use the old way of columns and intersections and so on. Just bear that in mind. Once you've done that, we now have the ability to use this. The other thing worth noting is that this is now moving the Flexbox container up to beta or beta for my American friends. So that's a sign of it moving in the right direction. Again, this is still only inside the cloud platform right now. I checked the developer's edition at the time I record this video, it's still showing as alpha only. Bear that in mind. Okay, so with that being said, we've now made sure that's all enabled. So let's go ahead and create a new page and I'm gonna use inside there to create the loop. Now there's two ways you can do this. I'm gonna show you this way, but you can also do this by going into the option for templates into your theme builder and inside there you'll see you have a new entry which is called loop and there we go you can see there's your loop which you can go ahead and you can create it from inside here or you can obviously create multiple ones and use them in different places so for ease i'm going to simply just go ahead and show you how to do this directly on the page but the principle is going to be pretty much the same let's go and create a new page we're going to call this loop and we'll just go ahead and publish it let's edit this with elementor and once we load that in, you can see we now have some new options in the left-hand panel. The container widget is obviously available because we've enabled that feature. We've also got the loop grid. So now if we go ahead and drop that into our page design, you'll see it gives us this new section. If we take a look at the left-hand side, you can see we can choose a template. So if we use the template way that I've just shown you very quickly, then we could go ahead and choose the template we want to use inside you. So this is kind of similar to when we used to use Elementor Custom Skin, or if you're coming over from something like Jet Engine, or you're using something like Dynamic Content for Elementor, this is gonna be a similar way of working. Because we're gonna create it in the page, there's gonna be nothing listed in there for now. You can, if you want to create the template, you can see you also have query options and pagination. We'll come back to those in a moment. Let's go to our layer, let's say create template. We'll say save the page just to make sure we don't lose any changes we may have made. And that now loads in the option to create our loop design. So what we're doing is we're creating the template for that individual loop item that will get repeated for each of the individual posts, you know, WooCommerce products, whatever it is you're kind of using. So whatever we drag and drop inside you will be repeated. And as you can see, if we take a look on the left-hand side, we've got these recommended options. Now this is where one of the limitations comes in and stick with me because I'm gonna show you how these work and I'm gonna show you something that currently doesn't work, but hopefully will be corrected. So all we need to do now is build up the various different parts. Let's drop our featured image inside there. We can set any parameters, we can set any image sizes, you know, caption links and so on. So we click on link, we can say custom URL, we can click on our database icon, and we can say go to the post URL. So we've now set that image to be a link to view the actual post. If we go back into our Rubik's Cube and we say we want to put in the post title, we can drag and drop that inside there. We'll set that to be something like H4. Again, we're going to come back to our Rubik's Cube, we're going to grab the option for the post excerpt. Again, all the same options are inside here. We click on the little wrench icon. We can now set up how many words we want. So let's just say we'll do something like 30. 
You've also got your advantage of before, after, and fallback. So still kind of limited in that respect. It would still be nice if we had the ability to kind of just like interact directly with the content instead of this very limited before, after, and fallback option. But I don't see them changing that anytime soon anyway. So one more thing we're going to drop inside there. We'll drop the post info underneath. So we've got some meta info about this particular post. And as you can see, we can go ahead and we can enable, disable, delete, customize, or whatever we want with these various different options. So we've created that. Let's go ahead and click on update. And now once we've done that, we've saved the template for our loop item. Now we just need to click on the save and back. That will take us back into the normal WordPress page or the template that we're currently working on. And now you can see we get a visual representation of all our posts using the loop, using our custom design. So all of that is pretty cool to see we now have those options. But where we really want power is to be able to not just use only the content that's included as part of the standard WordPress post or whatever you're creating. We want to put dynamic data in there, things like custom fields we may create and so on. And this is where the limitation currently arises. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's edit our template one more time. Now I've created just one ACF field and I've associated that with the normal WordPress post. So this is just the reading time. So what I'm gonna do is I want to just drop in a little bit of ACF data. So to do that, what we normally do is come back over to our widgets. We can grab a heading, a text editor, whatever we want. We'll grab a heading for this example. I have tested it with the text editor just in case it was a quirk with that one widget and I get the same issue. So what we'll do is we'll set this to be a div so we can style it if we want to and control it. We'll come up to where we've got our data, click dynamic tag and scroll to the bottom and there's our ACF field. We'll select it, click our wrench icon and we'll select the custom field, which is read time. We'll go ahead, jump into advanced and we'll just say read time and we'll put after. So you can see that now displays inside the template. So the template is showing our dynamic data. So all looks good. Let's hit save and back. And once that refreshes, you'll see that we've gone back to our loop but we don't see that dynamic data. It's nowhere to be seen. If we preview the page, again, you can see there's all the post information. It's linked up to the actual post, but no dynamic data that we've pulled in from ACF. So whether this is a bug because this is still an alpha release, I don't know. Hopefully, because we can see this inside the actual editing of the loop item, and it's displaying there, it's just not displaying when it's being output as part of the loop. I'm hopeful that this is just a little bit of a quirk or a bug that hasn't been kind of found and maybe watching this video, they'll see this and they'll put it back in there. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. History tells me I may be disappointed, but let's just be optimistic on this one. Okay, so we've seen how to create the template. So that's relatively simple and straightforward. So now what we can do is we can select the overall widget, which if we come back over is our loop grid. And now you can see there's our template, which we haven't named. We can go back in and name it. But we can now go ahead and customize things. We may say we want to put in two columns, and we want to have four posts to be listed. We can switch on masonry if we want to. More powerful, though, is the query option. This is where we can choose what we want to actually include. Now, I've only got posts inside you, but if you create a custom post type with custom post information, I'm hopeful when things all work and are ironed out that we'll be able to pull that data and create our custom post types, create our custom loop layouts, and then use this to choose exactly what we want. For now, we'll leave that as posts. We've got the standard include, exclude, include by, or exclude by with the options for like avoid duplicates and any offsets and so on. So if you want to create a couple of different loop layouts, one for like a hero post, and underneath you want a different ones, you can use the offset tool to handle all that side of things. Again, like I say, We've seen this. This is pretty much exactly the same as you have in the normal post widget. And again, underneath, we've got how we want to sort things. We may want to put in by certain dates. We can say we want to sort these in the alternative way. So we'll go for descending instead of ascending. And that updates everything accordingly. If we want to create a custom query, which I've shown you in a video before, which I'll link in the description below, you can reference that query ID from there. You can also come into your pagination and you can create custom pagination inside you. So numbers and previous, for example. And if we come down, you can see there's our pagination. So to kind of sum up where we are with this, this was a really, really quick whistle stop tour just to show you. First of all, it's only available on the cloud platform. Second of all, you have to have the container element enabled to be able to use it. Thirdly, it all works relatively well for creating using the default widgets. However, ACF fields don't seem to be working correctly in there right now, but I'm hopeful that will be corrected. 
But what are your thoughts? Now you've seen the basics of how this works, what do you think? Is this going to be the one thing that makes you stay with Elemental? Is this going to be the one thing that stops you from using tools like Ellie Custom Skin and things like that? Let me know in the comment section down below. I welcome all your comments, questions and feedback. As always, all applicable links are down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.